Today I will be playing a rare only Jefferson. I start off by tossing or starting items, cause those aren't rare. This means I gotta go and punch a zombie. The first grinding spot is straight away in the blood more. The fastest way to get a bunch of rares is by gambling them, so we need gold. Unlike in real life, I get lucky and our first gamble is a rare javelin. On level 6 we get access to the first of our skills, poison javelin is well pretty self explanatory. But it deals a ton of damage, so we use it to make our way through the underground passage and into the black marsh. We end up getting an amazing farming map, so that's exactly what we do. With the player count on max, I start looking at chests. After picking up a bunch of rares and selling the rest of the items, we go gambling and get ourselves a belt. We throw our giant stick into the smith's face. In the catacombs we come across a tile room that I can't use, before making our way to level 4, where I slurp some pots and run into Andario. When I dodge her poison she gets mad and starts slapping me in the face, I get in my throws where I can, but have to be careful when she throws her poison around, I think we can all agree she is the more toxic person. A few slaps later I am sick of it and jam my javelins right up where the sun doesn't shine to which she explodes and drops me all sorts of loot, but just like my imbue, it's crap. I pick up the Horodric cube, swat some flies in the maggot lair, ignore a bug, kick religious freedom in the nuts, craft a stick big enough to make me jealous, plunder the arcane sanctuary and kill the summoner. An Ethrune drops in Tal Rush's tomb, seriously game on the one run I can't use a stealth. I drink some tongue pots and jam the staff in the hole which opens up the portal to Turiel. The old bugger charges at Pratham while I start throwing my poison in his face. Pratham ends up taking too many punches to the face and I'm forced to run around in circles while waiting for the poison to tick down. Picking up the jade figurine and get reminded why fire resistors are important, so gambling we go. I end up getting some frost nova boots. My boots get to prove they are made for walking in the spider cavern. The legion of spiders quickly breaks through my mercenary's defenses, leaving me to run around while the poison deals its slow death to them. I grab an eyeful and say hello to my old friends the clones before making my way past an army of flayers and picking up the gitbin. The soul killers get me stuck and I'm not their stepsister so I can actually get out by safe and exiting. After bringing Ormus's reward to the recycling bin I head into the flayer dungeon again where I am greeted by dolls. To deal with them I bravely run back and let Proton do all the talking. As his reward he gets a new armor. I get some brain before dropping the sickest ring ever, seriously this thing is a 5 out of 6 point ring. A casual stroll through the sewers later I pick up the heart, loot some chests and upgrade my skill to plague javelin. It's the exact same thing as poison javelin, but better. After all of that I'm pretty tired so I pick up some light reading and ask the council to start a fire. In traffic call everything needs to be lured out because the heal they have will outheal the poison damage from the plague javelins. After they are all down I go and gamble again, getting some new gloves and boots before playing smash or pass with a compelling orb. The Durance of Hate gives me the first of many non-rare items that are better than the stuff I'm wearing. My mercenary gets a blue ball from Mephisto in the face and starts getting slapped around. And with Proton going down, Mephisto starts focusing his frustration on me. With my resist very low I need to get my dodges on point cause otherwise I'm in a lot of trouble. Lightning and cold ops fly everywhere while the poison seeps its way through Mephisto's life total. I end up getting hit a few times but the poison has finally done its work and the demon goes down. Isual is having a rave with his old friends so I decide to lure him away from the crowd. Isual will take forever with the poison so I quickly go and clear the den so I can respec into my final skill, charge strike, which is just charge ball but on a stick and happens to deal an absolute crap ton of damage. I use my newfound skill to stick it to Isual and make it into the Chaos Sanctuary, where I am once again forced to exit the game after getting stuck. I barely make it out at 67 HP, so in my next go at it, I make sure to snipe them from afar before losing my patience and still walking up to the Infector. Diablo is in a foul mood as even before I get to him he throws lightning in my face, which is almost as unkind of him as killing Pratham. I could get Pratham back here but he doesn't stand a chance, so it's time for me to dodge fire and lightning while making sure Diablo stays green. I dodge beam after beam in a flurry of lightning, throwing back at him every chance I get. Being careful to evade his beams, I kite around left to right, he switches to his fire attacks, which I dodge by standing behind his torch. In his rage he starts throwing everything he has at me. Fire, lightning, all of it is flying everywhere as I try to hold on for dear life while the poison ticks down. And after a long and arduous fight the demon hits the dust. Tech Farmer reminds me how important cold resist is before I drop another piece of kit that I would love to use if I was allowed. I quickly remind Shank of what his name means before making my way towards Eldritch which is one of the biggest grinding spots this run. He ends up dropping me a ton of gear, some of which I can actually use. 
and grind him all the way up to level 36 before moving along in a world where the game still tells me very clearly that my cold resist is too low. One ancient shish kebab later I get into an argument with some venom lord. Who in their anger immediately beat up Pratum who did nothing wrong. But alas, I end up having to kite them around while once again letting the poison do its thing. I walk in on Bale doing some weird stuff with a clone and tentacles. In his rage he starts throwing a tantrum compiled out of slapping and tossing blue V's at me. But charge strike is getting to a point where it's kind of obliterating. So Bale goes down and Pratum gets a new helmet. Ending Anya's career as an ice cube gets me much needed resistances. And the wish for a way to choose what item base I get from her. Oh well, there's always next time. The book of skill is the final part of normal before heading into nightmare. We start off by clearing the den and grabbing the smith's hammer for an imbue. I decide to roll javelins this time, cause they can get plus skill. I end up getting plus 2 skills on them, making for a very powerful item. With my new boomstick I head towards Andariel, who is feeling blue and being toxic again. Pratum nopes out immediately, the difference in power level however is staggering. Where in normal I needed to be careful, in Nightmare I can just straight up stand there, tank her and use Charge Strike to take her down. I tell Pratum he doesn't need to worry about Jamali and make my way into the arcane sanctuary, where a group of fanaticism ghoul lords is in my way. However, I can just use the arena against them and wait for them to die. Charge Strike makes short work of the summoner, I find another Saigon's armor in the tomb and go face tank Duriel. With Duriel using my life total as if it wasn't his, I go and grab Jamali to make sure he can tank instead of me. However, he doesn't last and I end up guiding Duriel through his arena to make the poison take down on him. After Duriel drops me 3 of the best items in the game, I go and tell Sasak what's up, grow my figurine collection, find some more awesome gear I can't use and meet up with some old friends before picking up the git bin at my 5 stat points. In the sewers I introduce Jamali to a wonderful world of tanking dolls before clearing out level 2. And with that I have made it to what will be the biggest farming point of this entire run, the lower Kurast. There are tons of chests here and all of them can drop rares. My resists aren't great and my gold is low so it's time to get to work. In the meanwhile I also pick up some items like a mask with gold resist and end up gambling an amulet. With that amulet I now have all the slots filled. Everything I can't use is going straight to Ormus, so even damaged life charms are going straight into his care. My first rare amulet sucked, so I kept on gambling them, ending up with a variety of cool amulets I can't use along the way. But I do end up gambling a slightly better one. I also upgrade my helm again, leaving me without good cold resist, but oh well, thawing pots exist. I also gamble gloves, a shield I wish I could use, and the shield I actually end up using. And while my cold resist is lagging behind, the other three are doing much better. I decide to keep on farming the lower curas for a bit longer, because I want to make sure to see if I can improve my cold resist, which almost turns out to be a bad idea as I barely make it out alive. I do however end up finding the perfect ring to use against Mephisto, a better armor and another item I wish I could use. Charms with resistances are very cool, but not rare, so Armus gets a buff to his fire resist. With all of that new gear, I make my way into the Flayer dungeon, because I apparently forgot to do so. But it's okay, Jamali can use the practice. Charge Strike makes short work out of the console this time around. And I make my way into the Dolls of Hatred. I run my way through them, but almost on the way point, one of them decides to explode anyway. At this point the boss fights are more polite suggestions before making your way into the next act than a real fight, so I quickly charge strike down with Vista. In act 4 I collect my 2 skill points and my 40k gold before heading into the chaos sanctuary and dropping everything in my way towards the Diablo fight. Like his brother, I can now just stand there and face tank him. Which is exactly what I end up doing because well, why wouldn't I? He wobbles his arm around a bunch but goes down after a while. I end up randomly running into all three of the barbarian cages but I can't use runes so... My karma bill is almost immediate as I get my ass handed to me in the crystalline passage and the ancient way. During the Ancients fight I find out that Kolik is a big Van Halen fan and as he goes ahead and jumps, he seems to realize he can teleport halfway through but goes straight back to jumping. Which is what the cool people will be doing. I celebrate beating the Ancients by yet again selling a charm I desperately want to use. I move past Ahmel to make sure Bale targets me with the Decrepify and let Jamali do all the hard work. Charge Strike gets me through the Bale fight and I decide to give Anya a second chance. I wish I hadn't though. 
the next piece of silence drops when I realize I forgot to pick up the scroll in the dark wood. I deal with the monsters and save Cain for another cold resist ring. A set pill drops for me in the sewers which goes into the giant pile of items I wish I could use. With Radamon defeated I head into hell. I clear the den of evil and go and get the scroll first this time. As I save Kane again, this time my reward is a crappy ring. I smash to smithereens everything on my way to the hammer before making my way into jail, where things get crazy spicy. Having made my way through, I regret helping everyone once again after seeing my impure results and become even more sad while gambling. Another rare ring drops. Seriously, what is up with all of the rings? Which Jamali follows up by demonstrating why resists are important. I get a fall room from a casket, netting me an easy 20k before guiding my way around the pool of blood on the catacombs level 4. My resists are definitely in trouble as Antario melts down my life total in a heartbeat. So I decide to go back to town and drink antidotes, which I should have done in the first place. Heading back into the fight, Charge Strike makes short work of her. I almost make it out of Lutko Lane before my mercenary dies in Act 2. And with that vote of confidence, I head into the Maggot Lair. Luckily, because I am built as a poison and lightning Amazon, nothing will be fully immune here. Jamali won't beat this monster, so I end up just walking around it. Another rare ring drops in the Claw Viper Temple, I don't get it either. One near death experience later, Fire Eye drops me another ring, seriously what the hell. In the Arcane Sanctuary I use the teleport pads to my advantage yet again, easily clearing out a lot of monsters that will be hard to deal with otherwise, that is, until the game is sick of it and sends out a bunch of specters that can just fly over. I run for my life trying to make it to the waypoint to get to safety, but in my haste I end up not making it and having to run straight back again while being chased. I end up getting a moment to spawn a TP and go and grab my mercenary, clearing the fight. Next up, I drop what is one of the best mercenary weapons in the game. Seriously, Wustaf is so broken. Another batch of Spectres had heard about what I had done to their friends and decided that they have an opinion about that. Their opinion involves me being very, very dead, so I run for my life again. I clear up the goats and get into a 2v1 against the Spectre. Having made my way to Duriel, I kite him once more. His punches hit hard and my poison is slow, so all I can do is be careful and keep running. Zark had no fucks to give this time around, as his legion of spiders chases me on a wild goose chase throughout the spider cavern. I try setting a TP, but can't make it in safely, so I get chased out of the spider cavern. I go get Jamali and we hop back in, this time surprising the spiders and easily clearing them. After all of that, I decide to do some relaxing gambling and end up with an amulet, which I use to pick up the kid pin. I decide that no one here is ever worth helping and start crying as I realize just how bad my cold trees still are. Luckily, things are hot in the jungle and I get a Vex rune from a box. Which makes for a nice 35k to sponsor my gambling addiction. Having made that vexatious decision, I get back into farm mode again as I reach the lower Kurast and decide to go vexing there. And with a Vex look on my mind, I start opening chests. I end up finding a Lem rune and a lightning skiller, both of which go straight into the gambling degeneracy. Before once again luring out everyone at Traven Call and making them go on a walk they can't refuse. Mephisto slaps Jamali again, but I can just face tank and take him down. He ends up dropping a matriarchal bow, which is the straight up worse than Kukushukaku, and takes up two slots for no reason. I collect my two skill points and pass a faster on my way to the Hellforge. I get a lem rune for my troubles. The Chaos Sanctuary went mostly without problems, except for Infector, who was just being a dick about things, so I had to run around and kite again. Diablo slaps around and shoots lightning, but he can't even take down my mercenary, so we make him a brother that dies in vain and move along to Act 5. At this point, my build is struggling. Even something as simple as an Eldritch fight becomes a fight to the death. Having won the fight, I get rewarded with some serious lightning resist boots, maxing out my lightning resist. I wave to the barbs again as I pass them. The ancient way spawns with fallen shamans and quill rats, so I figured I'd easily get through. But I end up taking over an hour in there to get to the ancients. 
The ancients way felt slow, but I ended up taking almost 30 minutes to kill the ancients themselves. Letting poison sip them down is not a very efficient way of doing things, but with the power of a lot of kiting, dodging and getting stuck everywhere on the map for some reason I clear the area summit. Only to be greeted by souls, I figure that with max lightning resist it can't be too bad, so I just start running through looking for the waypoint. It's not like they are hitting me for 200 a pop or anything. Seriously, what the hell happened to my maximum lightning resist? After a few close calls I end up making it to the waypoint, reroll the map and get into the throne of destruction, where I am once again greeted by dolls. At this point honestly I'm just sick of it, so I decide to reroll. I start clearing out the horror mages, whose poison is draining my life total rapidly, and as I clear out the last one, Disaster struck. I didn't see them until it was too late and I'm in the middle of an attack. I can't touch this. And with that, the run is over. Let's rewind and see that again, shall we? I start the attack, the souls start shooting and it's all over. I checked the footage, it was a 1 second mistake in a 17 hour run, resulting in 8 frames of taking damage. And with that, the run is over. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one, bye bye.